This is part 15 of link tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss conversion operators in link. All of these standard query operators belong to conversion operators category. In this video, we'll discuss the conversion operators that start with two, that is two list, two array, two dictionary, and two lookup. Two list operator, as the name speaks for itself, this two list operator extracts all of the items from the source sequence and returns a new list of day. This operator causes the query to be executed immediately, which means this operator does not use deferred execution. We discussed what is deferred and immediate execution in our previous session. So if you're new to those concepts, I would strongly encourage you to watch that video first. Let's look at an example of using this two list operator. Here we have got an integer array called numbers, which contains numbers one to five. Now what we want to do is convert this integer array to a list of integer and the easiest way to do that is by using to list method and notice that we are calling this to list on this numbers and if you look at the type of numbers it's integer so we are going to get back a list of t and t here is integer so we are going to get back a list of integer and then finally we are using this for each loop looping through each integer within the result and writing the value of i onto the console screen so to speed things up i have already typed um, this program so let's copy and paste it within the console application so here I have a new console application within the main method let's paste the code run it and as you might expect we should see the numbers printed from 1 to 5 now let's look at an example of using two array so what is this two array operator again the name speaks for itself two array operator extracts all of the items from the source sequence and returns a new array again this operator causes the query to be executed immediately which means it doesn't use deferred execution let's look at an example so what we want to do here is convert this list of string to a string array and this list of string at the moment contains country names so once we convert it to a string array we also want the elements within that array to be sorted in ascending order and to achieve that what we are doing is we are writing a simple link query here and then whatever result this link query produces on that result we're calling to array okay so it's going to return a string array for us because each country is of type string so this link query is actually going to produce i enumerable of string on that we are calling to array which is going to convert that to a string array and then we are using a for each loop looping through each string in that result and then printing the value onto the console so I have this typed already so let's copy it I'll have all these examples available on my blog in case you need them right so let's actually so we have the country names now in ascending order let's look at two dictionary so this two dictionary operator extracts all of the items from the source sequence and returns a new dictionary so what's a dictionary a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs we discussed what a dictionary is in detail in c-sharp tutorial so if you're new to dictionary please watch that video again this operator causes the query to be executed immediately which means it doesn't use deferred execution let's look at an example of using this two dictionary method and to look at the example we will be making use of the student class um, I have typed the code that is required for the student class so if you look at the student class it contains three properties and they are student ID name and total marks and then within the main method we need to build some student objects in reality we may get those student objects from a database table or from an XML file or from any other external data source but here we are actually spinning them up within the main method so let's copy that code and paste it right there so here we have got three student objects with all those properties populated now what we want to do is convert this list of students to a dictionary and within that dictionary you know we want student ID to be the key and student name to be the value right so what we're gonna do is on the list of students we're going to call to dictionary method now within a dictionary we want student ID to be the key so I'm going to specify a lambda expression here x such that x dot student ID so this lambda expression is going to specify what is the key going to be right and then 
we want another lambda expression which is going to specify what the value is going to be. So we want the value to be student name. Right, so we are using another lambda expression there. And if you look at this two dictionary method, there are four overloaded versions. At the moment, we are actually using this overloaded version where we specify both key selector and element selector. All right, and what is this two dictionary going to return? Notice that it is returning dictionary of int comma string. So why is it returning dictionary of int comma string? Because within this dictionary, student ID is going to the key. And if you look at student ID data type, it's integer. And value is name. And if you look at the data type of name, it's string. So we will get a dictionary with the key integer data type and value string data type. So let's go ahead and create a variable of that type, dictionary of int comma string and let's call it result. Now let's use a for each loop. So for each string, let's call it strn result. All we want to do now, what is this result? This result is actually a dictionary. So what do we have in the dictionary? Within the dictionary, it's a collection of key value pairs. Right? So we can't really say for each string str and result because that result is not a collection of strings. It's a collection of key value pairs. So we should be saying for each key value pair. And when we say key value pair, we also need to specify the type of key and the type of value. The type of key is integer and the type of value is string. And let's call this kvp n result. So what we want to do is print out the value of key and the value of uh, value. So kvp dot key backslash t for a tab space and kvp dot value. So now when we run this, as you might expect, we should have student ID and student name printed onto the console. Now let's look at another example of this dictionary. So this time what we want to do is we want student ID to be the key, but at the same time we want the entire student object to be the value within the dictionary. In the previous example, the value is actually student name, but this time we want the student object itself to be the value, right? So to achieve that, what we're going to do x such that x dot student ID, and I'm not going to specify, you know, element selector. So I'm actually going to use this overloaded version where we specify just the key selector and we want the key to be student ID. Now when I do this, we are invoking this on list of students. So by default, the value is going to be the student object itself. Okay, so if I hover the mouse over and look at what we are getting back, we are getting back a dictionary of int comma student. Okay, so we need to change the type here to int comma student. So now we have a key value pair of int comma student and key value pair dot value. Look at this. What is it returning now? It is actually returning a student object. So now I can use it to retrieve the name. And even if I want total marks, I can retrieve that as well because now the value is the entire student object. So kvp dot value dot total marks. So when we run this now, as you might expect, notice that we got all the three properties printed out. So we're getting name and total marks from the value and key, you know, the student ID from key. Okay. Now you can even use the second overloaded version where we also specify element selector. And here we want the entire student object to be the value. So X such that X. So here this Lambda expression is going to say the value is going to be the entire student object. So when we run this, we should have the same output. All right now let's look at using two lookup and one other important thing to keep in mind when we use two dictionaries is that the keys within the dictionary must be unique if two identical keys are created um, you know because of that key expression you know your key selector lambda expression if this produces uh, items with duplicate keys then it is going to throw an exception let's actually try to do this let's add another student object and let's say this student ID is also 103. Let's say XYZ is the name. And now when we run this, we will actually get an exception. Look at that. We got an argument exception there. And it says an item with the same key has already been added.
right? A dictionary cannot contain items with duplicate keys. Keys has to be uh, unique. Now let's look at to lookup. So what is this to lookup going to do? It's going to create a lookup. So what is a lookup? A lookup, just like a dictionary, um, it's a collection of key value pairs. A dictionary cannot contain keys with identical values, whereas a lookup can. So that's essentially the difference between a lookup and a dictionary. And to create a lookup, all you do is use um, to lookup method. Okay, notice that here on list of employees we are using to lookup. And when we create this lookup, we want job title to be the key. Okay, so basically we are grouping employees here that are present within this list by job title. Let's actually look at this employee class first. So here we have got this employee class with three properties, name, job title, and city. So let's copy that employee class definition paste that within our main method, I mean within our console application. And within the main method, let's also create in our list of employees. So at the moment we have got six employees. So within the main method we have this list and we've got here six employees and if you look at their job titles, two of them are senior developers and four of them are uh, developers. Now what we want to do is create a lookup uh, which is going to group the employees within this list based on job title and then we can use the job title as the key to look up developers and senior developers. Let me actually show you what I mean. So list employees dot to look up. Again if you look at the overloaded versions of this to look up they are very much similar to what we have for to dictionary. Look at this here we again specify a func uh, whose name is again a key selector. So we need to specify our function here. Let's specify it in the form of a lambda expression. We want to group the employees based on job title. So this is going to create a lookup um, you know, based on job title. It's going to group the employees based on job title. Now we can use this where keyword that's available in, uh, in our link. So let's call this employees by job title. Right, so this is a lookup now. Now what we can do is the you know the key within this lookup is job title, which means we can use that key to look up employees by their job title. Okay, so let's actually print you know the output like this. We want to print you know developer and then all the developers and then senior developer and all the senior developers. Okay, first we want that message employees group by job title. So console dot right line employees grouped by job title and then we are going to use a for each loop so for each where so again what is a lookup a lookup just like a dictionary it is also a collection of key value pairs so for each key value pair so let's call it kvp in our employees by job title collection. Now what we want to do is first print the key. So what is the key here? Job title. So console.writeline kvp.key. So that's going to print, you know, whether it's the employee is a developer or a senior developer. And for each key, there are multiple values. You know, we are, we are grouping employees based on that key, based on their job title. So after that key is printed, we want to print out all the employees write their first name, um, their job title, and the city. So what we are going to do is use another for each loop here. So for each var, let's call it maybe employee in. Now, this is the lookup. So we are going to the, take this lookup. In this, we have employees grouped by their job title. So employee by job title. And look at this, the moment I open square bracket, it's asking me to specify the key. So how do I get the key? We can use this property right here, kvp.key. Or you can simply hard code it, something like developer or senior developer. But now since we are using a for each loop, we want all the keys and you know the respective employees that are grouped based on that key. So what I'm going to do is actually pass this key here. 
and then obviously though we are using you know anonymous type here this var is actually employee which means we can actually print out the different properties of that employee so first of all let's print tab space and then employee dot name backslash t employee dot job title backslash t and employee dot city right so let's go ahead and run this now notice that we have developer and all the developers senior developer and the respective senior developers okay now let's look at one more example here so we have this list of employees here and this grouping is done based on job title now there may be a requirement where you want to group employees by city if that's the case you know all you do is actually let's print two blank lines here so console dot right line and console dot right line let's copy this piece of code so now we want to group employees by city so list employees to look up what I'm gonna do is x such that x dot city so this is going to create you know um, a lookup in which we have employees grouped by city again you can use the other overloaded version where you can specify you know your element selector do you want the entire employee object to be a value within that lookup or only a few properties of the employee object you know it all depends on what you specify you know as the lambda expression for this element selector if you don't specify anything by default the value is going to be the employee object because this is list of employees right so here we are going we are getting employees by city right so employees grouped by city and for each key value pair in employees by city so we want to print out the value of key and then look up employees based on that key so now when we run this first employees will be grouped by job title and then employees are grouped by city so those are the employees in London office and those are the employees in Bangalore office that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day